Hi everyone. I wanted to share with you my Ruby Charms collection because um, I'm going to be running uh, a color along and some other things and I thought I would share with you my love of all things Ruby Charm colors. It started simple enough with this piece of art right here. It's something that uh, was one of the first things that Susan did. Um, my coloring of it is really sad. I was really uh, nervous about coloring this rabbit. It was her first um, reaching out to the coloring community to see if her line art would be accepted. And we met, air quotes, um, on Instagram. And she asked me if I'd like to color this drawing. I was so afraid to do it. Um, it seemed like a really big deal to be one of the first to color something by Susan. And uh, so this is the start. So I'm going to go through just all of my quick things. This was also another one, one of the very first things I ever colored for Susan um, was this bird. I did it in a couple different things. And this particular one was much later in our relationship and friendship. This is a very special drawing that she did of our dog that passed away a year ago, I believe next week. Um, I can't remember the exact date, but it was in August that we said goodbye to our dear Sydney um, small dog, furry baby. And uh, she had been with us almost 14 years when we said goodbye. And Susan drew me this beautiful line art um, to remember her for our family. And it actually took me a while to color this one because of the emotion involved, but I cherish it. I still need to frame it. I'm a terrible procrastinator, but um, this is something that you can't get. It's just for me, but maybe one day she'll sell it in a PDF. It's been a year. It's probably not. It's probably okay now. Um, a rabbit that I never finished. I thought I pulled that one out. Um, this is her color wheel. This is something that I believe this is the one that she makes available in her Facebook group. Um, it's her autumn cat. Someone did a fabulous version on uh, in the Black Magic coloring book where they made the pumpkins watermelons, and it looks great. It was a really cool idea. Something original someone did. This was another fall drawing. Um, and if you're not familiar with Susan's um, test pages and color charts, she always includes a way to test and play with your colors. I think I did this one strictly with with ink tents, but I can't remember. Here was one that uh, she shared with all of us. It also happens to be the piece of art, which I'll get to later in the Black Magic 2. So I colored that one early on this year. Um, these mice are really special to me as well. They're one, just one of those drawings where I had a hard time um, figuring out the lines and what I was going to do with them. And then it turned out really cool. And I have a hard time with skies and clouds. And anyway, so one day she asked us what was our favorite. And I said that one. And she has a shop um, where you can get coffee mugs and canvas bags. And she sent me my coloring in a canvas bag that I use when I take my coloring on the go. So really fun there. This is something that she made. I don't think this one is in a book yet. No, I don't think it is. Um, I really like that winter scene. That one was really fun. I'd never done snow before and I made, um, made it a night scene with the moon. It was really fun to color. This is another winter one that she did. Um, she made a white swan. Pretty fun. This was a a freebie, I think, that she gave to all of us in her group. And this is one of our other team members, um, dogs, that Susan drew for her because uh, she does Shih Tzu Rescue, Laura. Um, if you follow her Instagram, Duke's wife, um, she takes a lot of pictures of her actual dogs, and they're just so full of personality. I just love them. Um, this is one of the drawings that Susan did that I've seen other people do so much better than I did. So I really need to give this one another try, but I haven't had time yet. 
I don't know if any of you know, but Susan um, also does some garden art. She has some things that have been successful, some bags for people who garden that have vegetables and things on them. This was from one of her series. I believe these are still in PDF on her Etsy page. Those are really fun. This was also a gift from Susan. My purple things did not come out right. Black. They look ugly, but I loved this one. I did earthy colors with the purples, and I was really happy with everything except my big circle things. Um, this is Cresty. He is another pet of one of Susan's loyal fans, which you'll see again because I've actually colored him twice, once here and once in my creative companion. Her lemurs, her lemurs were so fun. Um, if I can get it to focus on the fur. I really had fun with the fur and Susan compared the way my fur came out with a little bit of Van Gogh, which was super complimentary um, and a total accident. So <laughs> her lemurs are great. This is one of, uh, one of hers that I did that I absolutely love the results of this moth. Um, I was playing with uh, getting that gem look. I think that one came out good. I really like it. This is one which I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, it is my fault that this is not in the Insect Imaginary book because when I colored it, I didn't know what to do here and I really struggled and flubbed. And so uh, she ended up pulling this one instead of redoing it because I um, felt lost in space with this open area. But it's a fabulous drawing. Maybe one day she'll rework it and make that one available. This is one I think I've done um, this butterfly more than once, but I haven't done the entire thing. This is, um, I think, almost all ink tents. This is her Tudor can. This one's so cool and interesting. It is a butterfly with two cans and koi fish, and then like this headdress of feathers. So uh, super imaginative. And I tried to make it where the feathers were neutral to not draw away from the Tudor can itself. But that was super fun. You just let your imagination go crazy with it. This is one I colored when I was on vacation. And this is in her in Insect Imaginaria. You can see I printed it on a, on a card stock, a gray card stock. So um, I really, really like how this one came out. Another one from Insect Imaginaria that I worked on in secret before we were allowed to really show what we were doing. You may or may not remember that one. Also from her latest book. And another one because we're just in love with dragonflies. I really liked this one too because um, that was the first time I did bee wings that you could see through. So that was really fun. I did enjoy this one a lot. And again, it's printed on a colored paper. So I, I like to do a lot of colored paper. This is just like my favorite, my favorite, favorite. Um, I love moths over butterflies. Moths over butterflies. Whoop, whoop. Um, so <laughs> I also love um, in Prisma pencils, the warm grays. And I rarely get a chance to use them. And they just seemed like they were calling me for these moths. And then I went on Pinterest. And these flower petals, there's 11 pencils um, that I use to make these flower petals. They uh, Each petal took quite a bit of time um, layering all those pencil strokes. And um, this one I just love. I think it, it came out even better than I imagined in my imagination often I fail my imagination so this is one of those few times that I didn't fail my imagination so that makes me happy I just love this caterpillar he's a little cuter than a lot of things that Susan does but every once in a while you just want somebody who's really cute so there's a caterpillar also an insect imaginaria and um, this one here uh, Betty hung when she did this she did an amazing background my um, week attempt was to make a few little orchids like visible in the fog. So uh, these are here and here and the one back here. 
Those are original to me, my attempt at making a creative background. Um, you should see Betty's. Hers are amazing. Um, you can find her on the Ruby Charm coloring team as well. Her coloring is amazing on Instagram. This is one from, oh, I think volume two. So we'll see. I Don't quote me on that. But I, I loved this praying mantis and the sun. Um, really fun to do. Here is one that I have a whole YouTube series on, on the flowers and the bees. I shared my, um, here we go, fuzzy bee. Come on, focus, focus. How to do my fuzzy bees. And again, I made the wings. Um, this one is the best for seeing that they're a little bit see-through because you can see part of the bee through one wing and the flower through the other. So there's a whole YouTube series just on this. Um, I made short videos on each aspect of that one, if you care to watch it. And these are frogs. Uh, the three of us, Laura, Betty, and I, we all did these frogs and kept them secret from each other. We didn't share. And um, I love Betty's frogs, and I love Laura's frogs, and I feel so, so about mine. <laughs> Uh, the weird thing is, is it came out exactly like I planned, and um, which again is rare for me. But theirs were both so much more fascinating and more successful that I feel sorry for my frogs. They're not that great. Close up, I feel like everything that I did works. Um, so I'm going to show you some close up of my frogs. I love their eyes, uh, the glittery detail, and the fact that each frog has one of the colors. There's a blue, red, purple frog, blue, red, purple eyes, blue, red, purple dots, and they're alternated between them. So I really like how that turned out. Um, this is one, after I listened to a passionista, passionista podcast, a particular artist said, if you want more contrast, don't be afraid to leave some things white. So I played with that. I actually did not color the white parts of the butterfly and I think it really works. So you might want to try that too. And I'm not going to take credit for that. You have to listen to Passionese's podcast to find out which artist recommended that. This is a flying pig. He is not in any of the books yet. Um, I just adore him. I tried to make him look real. Um, this was one that I struggled with and didn't feel proud of. But they tell me that it has this antique feel, vintage feel. So... Um, since I've been looking at it through that perspective, I actually am happy with how my flying pig turned out. This is one that's a brand new release from Susan, is the birds and the houses and the vines. You should see, again, Betty's version of this. Amazing! She, you know how we all complain about there's too many leaves and we're tired of leaves? Well, Betty filled this page up with leaves, and what she did is just, it's gorgeous so um, mine does not compare but I do I do like if I can get it to focus my little maybe I can't I've got glitter I always have some glitter somewhere in um, almost every page I hardly ever have a page without glitter so those are my I printed out I got a whole stack of Ruby Charm printed out art you see so um, I tend to do that because most of the time I am doing things before the books are released. So also it's nice to have thick paper and if you're going to mess up, you don't want to mess up in your book. If you're not familiar with the Creative Companion, um, you need to be because it's amazing. This is a art journal and this page I actually did ink tents, marker, and pencils and you can see that the paper held up well. Some people really complain about the paper in that um, are used by Amazon Publishing, but I don't. I don't find I have a problem with it. So this book is super fun. I have kept my. Uh, you can see the months that I've colored a lot. I try to put the color alongs in here that Passioni supposed that I'm going to try to participate in, and then I keep track of color combinations and things that I've done. Um, a recent here I told you I did Cresty again. This book also has a lot of art in it. Um, and then one of the amazing things is just 
nearly endless color charts on black and white and for your pencils of all brands and no brands um, you can have all your pencil logs in the same place so and there's that color chart again I to me this is a must-have it is it's a tool and a coloring book and it's great this was Susan's um, first book through Amazon that she sold on Amazon art journal one um, I have not done a lot in here yet so because I'm always busy coloring PDFs before they come out but one that I did color in here is uh, this amazing muse this is Susan's muse uh, there's a story to her and you'll have to buy the book to know the story that's all I'm gonna say um, her books are fabulous there's lots of coloring tips places to play um, my little personal note here from Susan my name plate you've probably seen some flip throughs Again, some color charts are included in her book. And each, each thing has a black side so that bleed through is not an issue. A play side so you can figure out how you want to color the page. And then a little extra entry and a story. So um, that's volume one. Fabulous set of colors. Volume two, you can see here's Krusty. So, he's made his appearance. Also, uh, here we go. Here's your colors, Laura King. She's on my team with Susan and us. Well, Susan's team. Um, Luca, Lucio, me. And then, uh, where is Betty? Betty is the amazing lion. Betty Hung, she is on volume two. Volume two has... All the pictures in volume one in it. I have also again I haven't colored in here a lot but I did play with the color charts. Focus, focus. I did the seahorses in here. Seahorses are important if you're thinking about her new book coming this fall which is Ocean Imaginarium. This is her lionfish. I did this on the white paper and in the black book. I love the lionfish. He's awesome. Um, I've not colored in here as much as I want to, but you can see that a lot of these pages I have colored just in PDF format. Bow dog. Some playing around. That's volume two. There's my opening page. So those are three books you can find on Amazon. Let's go ahead and skip to her most recent book that you can find on Amazon, Insect Imaginarium. You've seen that I've done a ton of the insects on PDF because I played with them before the book was even in print. Um, to test color for Susan, it's so much fun to get to do that. But I have colored a little bit in my book. Let me see. I know there's another one in here. Ah, this one. I have some Maybe a YouTube or something on this one. I had a lot of fun planning this one out, planning out the honeycombs. Um, one of our other team members, Stephanie Red Tifa, she started a color along with this and uh, gave some in her YouTube's video links and on honeycombs. And I just changed the colors up. I wanted pink honeycombs to make mine different, so it wasn't exactly like that. I do try to find inspiration and not copy. And here's my opening page, which I think just is full of pop and wonder. Okay, so those are all on Amazon. And something new are notebooks. These are eight and a half by 11. They are lined. And you can use them for any type of bullet journaling, schoolwork, keeping your home organized, whatever. Um, there's a few different covers. I've only got two right now. You can see I've had this one a little longer and um, I use it for note taking and personal study. I, I love the paper. Um, I use uh, a gel pen and you can see that I don't have a problem with bleed through. Apologize for my horrible handwriting. 
Um, so you should grab a couple of those, those notebooks too, because they're fabulous. This is one book that she sold exclusively on Etsy. And this book was uh, the first Etsy book, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Look at that, my spiral was in bad shape. I'm gonna screw that back in. Um, this uh, was one that she hand binds. She puts all this, she prints it, puts it all together. And uh, I have colored in this one. Boy, it's been a long time since I did that one. Um, these books are on a heavier, thick paper. This is one of my favorites that I ever did. Um, my crows actually have metallic watercolor over the pencil on the blue to give it that sheen. It's so cool. I love to do that effect. Her art is amazing. Actually, those crows were one of the things that first attracted me, and I was scared to death to color them for the longest time. Her water crane is amazing. She's got a couple of horse line arts. Her lions are so cool. This was one of my first limited palette attempts, and um, I'm super happy with it. I think it came out good. And again, he's got a little bit of shimmer and shine here and there. You can see. And the antelope, those leaves. Those leaves will make you crazy, but they're so much fun. Oh, there's some on Instagram. Some people have done this one, and they just blow my mind how creative people are. I did this one on one of the greeting card sets. It's smaller, and uh, it takes up half the page, and then you fold it, and it makes a great greeting card. You should check those out on our Etsy, too. You print them yourself. So this book, I just love this book. I've been coloring Susan's art for a long time now, a couple of years, I guess. So, uh, but you can see that most of the time I end up doing the PDFs. Okay, so Black Magic. This one has been all the rage. She only publishes these periodically right now. I don't believe there are any available, but she will make them available again in the fall. Black Magic is amazing. But you can't see <laughs> um, without without a really good light. But it is all art that you're familiar with. And this is what one looks like colored. So uh, I, I did. I tried to film this one before. And uh, it is a, a uh, very difficult task that I failed at. So I'm not even going to try this time. Um, here's a couple that I've done in here. If you want a really serious coloring challenge. Um, you want to get lost in a page. You need to have a good light and a lot of determination and do a little bit of research and do some testing on black because your pencils um, come out way different on black. So um, I have that and then her most recent Black Magic 2. I actually uh, did this one I had her, she gave me the option to not have it on pure black paper. And I went ahead and did that because I'm so busy as it is that um, the extra time the black takes, I have plenty to do in the first one still. Also, she includes this amazing sheet and you can pop it out, take it right out, put it back, put it in between the pages. Um, I use mine in my other books too. That's a great um, saver if you are a marker person or uh, you like to use a lot of watercolor or things like that. So um, this is what's in this one. And I really can't wait to dig into these two. But I do have a slight problem because Susan is so prolific and is creating so much art that it's already time and she has already started working on a specific date yet to be announced of a book to be released in October called Ocean Imaginarium. Um, you've seen her lionfish, you've seen her sea lions, you've seen her seahorses. Um, 
Susan has some amazing ways of adding lots of detail. And so we are all extremely excited about getting um, her ocean book. And because you made it through this entire video, I am going to show you very, very quickly my not quite finished very first page from Ocean Imaginaria. Are you ready? Are you watching? Here it comes. <gasps> okay, that's all I'm going to show you. You got your glimpse. Don't tell anybody. They have to make it through the whole video in order to see it. Okay. Susan released some amazing chicken art. <laughs> it sounds so funny when I say it best. Okay, so it is a three PDF series, The Chickies and the Wagon Wheel, um, Mr. Rooster and the Corn, and she has, this is inspired, this chicken, by her actual chicken that lives at home, and she is in a background, uh, her background is beet leaves, um, Chikorita. So, if you are in her Facebook group, you also already know that you get a free testing PDF to play with the feathers and the different aspects of your colors before you draw these. Now, I've printed these out. They're in PDF format. They're on her Etsy. And this is to announce that there is a chicken color along. So, get on over to Etsy. Fill your coop with these chickens and join her Facebook group and get your little freebie test page so that your chickens come out how you hope. And if you participate in this color along, the hashtag is going to be hashtag fill your coop and the, there are prizes. There are prizes, my friends. So you want to see the prizes? The prizes are going to be, I'm just going to randomly pick you color any one of your chickens, any of the three that you want, and you put that hashtag, fill your coop. And at the end of August, the last day of August, I am going to take all the names that I can find on Instagram that have fill your coop, and one person, and I hate to say this, I know you're going to be sad if you're not in the United States right now, but I can only ship these in the United States. So... Whoever is randomly selected from the participants in the Fill Your Coop Chicken Color Along, you got to go buy your PDF, though, over in the Etsy shop. You are in the running for an insect imaginarium, but I have a bonus for you. There will be a second winner who gets the very first Volume 1 art journal. Now, if you already have one or the other and you only want to be in the running for Insect Imaginaria or for Volume 1, please state that with your hashtag and I will make note of that and put you only in the drawing for the book that you're interested in. So I hope you join me. I'm going to try to do some more videos on how I'm coloring the chickens, which may or may not be a disaster because I don't have my plan yet. It's going to take me the whole month of August. I may not finish all three. You may not finish all three. You don't have to finish all three. Pick one. Just stick with one and work on that. And you can, you know, use the hashtag if you're posting work on projects. You can use the hashtag fill your coop if you're um, posting your completed chicken or rooster or chicks. So I hope you join me. I hope you've enjoyed my video, my little story of Susan and I's journey through this art world. And uh, thank you for watching my video. Happy coloring.